What's up students, hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today I wanna to go through a short answer paragraph question which is seen on the short answer free response on the AP Physics 1 exam. In 2020, this is one of the two questions that they're going to ask. The first is a qualitative quantitative translation, a QQT, and this is the other type, the SAP. Now this problem, it, it's very troubling for students because I think it's very vague. They don't tell you exactly what they want. So in this video, I'm gonna work through it, but I'm also gonna tell you the tips and things that you should be thinking about and doing when answering these questions because a lot of students think they're gonna get it right, but they miss some key details, all right? This is all about being specific and not babbling. And these types of questions work great for kids in like Science Olympiad because these are the things that they have to deal with on a regular basis. So that's kind of the approach that I'm gonna take when I look at this type of problem. So let's look at the facts of the case. Essentially, they built this launcher that's gonna be a horizontal projectile, and here at distance D, there is gonna be some sort of target, and that target is gonna be worth the maximum amount of points. So they prepare for this robotic competition. They start at X equals zero, we can see that. The robot's calibrated great. So this is the way they calibrate it. They calibrate it at some distance in the y direction, that's h, and at some speed, v0. So although they could probably vary the speed, this is what they're gonna, they're gonna walk into the competition, they're gonna press go, and it's gonna hit the target when I'm at h and v0. And they keep landing consistently at x equals d. The positive directions are also given. So this is another big point that we have to understand. Oftentimes, we can choose our own positive and negative directions, but in this case, they're gonna do it for us. On the axis below, sketch the graph of the horizontal and vertical components of the sphere. The velocity is a function of time, where time equals zero and the sphere is launched at t equals this t. Okay, this right here is the horizontal component. So that's whatever, this, that's this one right here. We know that when we neglect air resistance in the horizontal direction, that V remains constant. There's no push or pull, there's no acceleration. So if I label this V naught, I'm just gonna have a straight line, and that is gonna be the speed in the x direction the entire time. But on the flip side of that, we have a y component that's gonna be accelerating and getting bigger and bigger and bigger due to the acceleration due to gravity. Now, that acceleration is gonna be constant, and we know that the fancy physics word for slope for a v versus t is acceleration. So when I draw this slope, it better be constant because the slope of a V versus T graph, if we remember back to Devo, when I have a V versus T graph, the slope tells me acceleration. So essentially, I'm just gonna plot a couple points. I look at this, I have no speed. Now I'm going to increase speed at a constant acceleration, but look, here's where some students got thrown off in this. This is the minus Y direction. So essentially, it's gonna look something like this. These were each, each worth one point on this exam, okay? So this is a straight line where V naught is initially equal to zero meters per second. It ends with some V final, but it accelerates at a constant acceleration. This is increasing speed, so it'd be like minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So most students are gonna get this one, okay? The ones I saw that got this one wrong, they didn't go in the negative direction or this was not a constant straight line. Remember, acceleration due to gravity is constant. Now the second part of this question, which is the bigger amount of points, is where some students tend to just need a little bit of practice and they need to understand what they're exactly looking for. As I scroll down here, there's two things that I want to identify. Number one, if you're taking the 2020 exam, you're going to need to upload your files this year because we're doing it online. Guys, practice doing this, all right? You only have five minutes to take a picture, email it to yourself, and then upload it here. Guys, practice this, okay? If you're not taking it in 2020, if you're taking it in the future, in the past, that wasn't a big deal. But this year, you're gonna be uploading the pictures of your graph right here. The next part of this problem, when the student arrives at the competition, the height of the speed launcher can no longer be adjusted due to a malfunction. If you're in Science Olympiad, you have experienced this before. So essentially we get to the competition, we say, crap, this is terrible. I can only launch it at Y equals H over two. So half the height, but the good news is I still have V or two V 
that I could launch from to try and get those four points at D. So it says in a clear, coherent paragraph length response, which is super vague, that may also contain diagrams. If they say may also, they're pretty much saying, hey, you better have some diagrams and you better have some equations to justify your answers, okay? This is not may, this is you should. Describe the speed at which the ball should be launched to the student's maximum number of points. So if we look at the point zones, if you're right on D, I'm gonna get four. If I'm a little long, I get three. If I'm a little short, I get two. So what this part of the question is saying is, hey, if I'm at H over two, and I have a choice of this or 2v0, A, can I land on the four points and get my total points? And if not, am I going to be a little long or a little short? And which one of those is going to be best? And you can't just say, oh, it's going to be 2v0 because it's going to go a little long. You have to go through each one specifically. So that's exactly what I want to do now. So essentially what I want to do is I want to outline my thought process and then I'm going to write it into that paragraph form that they wanted. So the first piece of strategy I want to think about are what are the variables in this problem? Because the variables in this problem, you're going to have to talk about them when you're trying to defend the work that you want to do. Now in this particular problem, this is a horizontal projectile. So in a horizontal projectile, we have some initial velocity, we have some acceleration, we have some distance traveled, and we have some time. So I need to make sure when I speak about whether I'm going to use V or 2V naught, that it is defended by these situations. The next thing I want to think about is what was my T before I got to the competition, right? At my given conditions, so at H and V naught, what in fact was my T so that I can compare it to my problem now where I now have H over 2. Because time is definitely going to be a factor of whether I can get to that target. Remember, we want to get to here. This was 4 points. Just past it was 3. And just before it was 2. And this was D. All right. So I want to know what my times are. Then after I look at what my times are and I know what my time is, I can say, can I hit the target D at 2 V naught? Because I know that I can't do it at V naught. I already know that when I lower the amount of Y height, T is going to decrease. I can say those things, but I'm going to have to prove them. So I know that when I go to H over 2, I'm not going to go as far. So my only saving grace to get to D is to be able to do so. So I'm going to have to defend that point. And then if yes, I'm done. Because then I'll just launch it at 2 because it's going to land on D. If no, I have to choose V0 or 2V0 according to my point values. Am I going to be a little bit short or a little bit long? So these three points are what I have to prove in this short paragraph. So the first thing I'm going to knock off is I'm going to look at what was T before. And I'm going to make a diagram just like I did for all my horizontals. I have V, A, X, and T. And I have them in the X direction and the Y direction. And I'm going to call this figure one so I can reference it later inside my paragraph response. So remember, this is before we got to the competition. So we have V naught. The speed in the Y direction is always zero. This is minus G. The acceleration in the X direction is always zero. This was given as D. That's where I wanted to land. And I was going to launch it from some H. So now I can use x naught equals v naught t plus one half a t squared to find out what the time was going to be. Now I'm going to use the y direction because I want to know this in terms of h because that's the thing that I'm going to change to h over 2. So when I do that, I see h, that was my initial height. This equaled 0 because of this. So this term went to 0 plus one half minus g t squared. And I find here that T initially was equal to 2H over G. I'm going to call this figure 1A so I can reference it later. And we know that the time in both directions is the same. Now I said I wanted to know the time before and after. So now I can make this H over 2 and say that 
x naught v naught t plus one half a t squared. Now I'm going to do h over two equals one half g t squared. And now I see that t is just equal to the square root of h over g. And I'm going to call this figure 1b. So now I can not only say that t is going to be less at h over 2, but now I proved it mathematically using my figures. So now I know what the t is before and after. I'll move on to my next point using physics. Can I hit the target d at v0? Essentially what I want to prove is I want to prove this d. I want to say that if I have some v, some a, some x, and some t, but now I launch at 2 v naught, and I know my acceleration is still 0, and I know my time now, right? I found my time. My time is going to be the square root of h over g. Will this equal d? But I don't have an expression for d, right? All I know is that d is d. So this isn't going to come out and say d. So what I want to do is I want to come up with an expression first for d initially. So if I go back from figure 1, we know that x equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared, but that term is going to go away. So we knew that d was equal to v naught times the square root of 2h over g. I'm going to call this figure 2. That's really the representation of the target in terms of v naught h and g, so that now I can come up with that in terms of v naught h and g and see if these two are equal. So we know that x is equal to v naught t, which is now going to be 2 v naught times the square root of h over g. I'm going to call this fig 2a, and we see, in fact, that when I compare these two, v naught square root of 2h over g and 2v naught h over g, we see that these are in fact not equal. So what that tells me now, which was another point, is that I can't get four points. All right, And that's one thing that I'm going to need to reference. So can I hit target D? The answer to that is going to be no. So now my next thing is, if I use 2v0, where am I going to go? And if I use v0, where am I going to go? Am I going to be greater than d, the initial d, or am I going to be past it? Well, this right here is for 2v0. So now I know how far it's going to go for 2v0, right? Is it going to go further or is it going to be closer? Well, it's going to be too far. Now, what if I were to launch at just v0 at h over 2? Well, I would see then that x equals v0 over t. I would see that now my new x at just v0 is equal to the square root of h over g. And I'm going to call this figure 2b. Now, essentially what this tells me now is that v0 square root of h over g is less than my original d, v0 square root of 2hg, but that is less than if I launch at 2 v naught, which is going to be 2 v h over g. That's what tells me that I want to launch at 2 v naught because this is worth 2 points, this is worth 4 points, and this is worth 3 points. And we already said that this is out of the question. So now the hardest part. I just have to put all of this into words to get all the points that I need. I'm going to write it out and then I'll explain it. And all I'm going to write out are these three points and I'm going to reference my figures to prove the things that I already knew. So that the person that anybody that wanted to argue with me about this, they, they can't argue with me because the physics won't lie. Okay, so as you can see, there's not a ton of words that I just wrote but it's backed up by all of my physics and my diagrams. So here's what I wrote and here's where I'm gonna get some points. And these points are according to the scoring guide. As shown in figure 1a and 1b, at h over two, the time of flight will be less. Stating that fact got you one point. Because of this, we need to know if we can still hit the target for a maximum of four points. 
That's what I want to know right now. So we did this. Now I want to know if I can hit the max target. Using figure two and figure 2A, we see that at 2V0, we cannot hit the target and get max points. This gave you another point. This was worth one point. Stating the fact that you could not hit the target anymore was worth a point. Because if someone was going to argue with you, we can still hit the target. You can say, no, 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 we can't. We need to go to plan B. At 2 v not, the ball will land just beyond the target for three points. That's what we showed right here. As shown in figure 2B at v not, it lands just before the target for two points. So stating where it would land at 2 v not got you one. And for st stating where it's going to land at just v not got you another one. Because I cannot hit the target, I will launch at 2 v not and get three points. The last point was just for making this a clear and concise paragraph. So as we remember, the question asked, should I launch at 2 v not or v not? And this is all the work, and these are the words that you needed to get full points. And as you see, this really only took me about 15 minutes to do, and I was walking through it. You'll be able to do it much quicker, but outline your variables. Regardless of the question, outline your variables, and know that you're going to need to talk about each and every one of them. Then come out with an outline or a train of thought that you would say to somebody if they were going to argue against your plan. You'd say to them, all right, well, I know that when H is H over 2, I know that time's going to be less. And they're going to say, prove it. Okay, we did that right here. Then we're going to say, all right, we know time's less. Can we still hit the target? And we say, okay, let's do some math and find out. No, we can't. All right, well, we know we can't hit the target. What are we going to do next? Well, let's find out. Are we going to be a little bit far? Are we going to be a little bit short? And then we'll just cut our losses and we'll see what happens and we do some quick math and we find out that 2 v naught ended up out here and v naught ended us out here so we went with v naught that is why we went with 2 v naught i hope this helped going into future practice i'll do some more like these as we get closer to the exam please give the video a thumbs up if it did help you consider subscribing for more physics help and enjoy the rest of your day